With plenty of storylines heading into their fight on Saturday, Puncher versus Counter Puncher, Rising Star versus Vet, Mexico versus Puerto Rico. Perhaps we overlook another angle to Jaime Munguia versus Gabriel Rosado, Warrior versus Warrior. Action packed from beginning to end, Munguia earned a unanimous decision against Rosado to further his climb in the middleweight division. Both fighters proved to have iron chins and unbreakable wills in one of the most entertaining fights of the year. Look, Barack, we expected this from Rosado. We expected this from Munguia. I was excited throughout the entire fight. What was your initial uh, reaction to the decision? No, I can't say I expected this from Rosado. I expected him to be tough. I expected him not to actually get knocked out, even though when we had Munguia on our show, I asked him, I said, do you think you have the power to knock out Rosado? He said, yes. No, hardly anybody has the power to knock out Rosado. Triple G couldn't even knock him down, you know? So I, I expected him actually to do two things. I expected him to, to, to walk him down sometimes and push him backwards, but I expected him to box and be slick, you know, like we know that he can now to not be that Gabriel Rosado that's right in front of you. And that's what I thought. I thought he'd outbox him in spots. And then when the time presented itself, sit down on his punches and walk him back. Yeah, Barack, I think the difference in this fight, people are throwing a lot of things out there. For me, it was just volume. That's it. Both guys were tough as nails. Both guys threw punches. Both guys didn't have great defense on Saturday night. They were there to fight. And I agree with you, Barack. I did expect a little bit more boxing from Gabriel Rosado because he, he talked about going into that fight showing him who's the better boxer. But Munguia's volume of punches was too much. Now, Gabe is my guy. You know, we love Gabe. Um, I don't agree with what he said at the post-fight press conference saying that he felt like he won that fight. I think once he goes back and watch the tape, he's going to see that Munguia was a little too busy for him. There were times where Gabe would stand right in front of him and just put his shield up, but a lot of those punches were coming through. So I think he got hit with a lot of punches. Even though the fight was hard to score, Barack, there were a lot of rounds that they were action-packed. But... A lot of those runs, I feel like, went to Munguia. So you can see an entertaining, competitive fight, and still it can be a shutout to some degree if, you, if you're judging it by rounds. But there were a lot of moments where Gabe showed not only grit, we already knew that, but he stood in the pocket and landed big shots. We knew Munguia had a hell of a chin, Barack. I mean, this guy can take a punch. So I didn't expect Gabe to knock him out. I expected him, to your point, to outbox him. He went in there <laughs> like he did against, uh, against Triple G, like he did against David Lemieux. The guy got into uh, Gotti mode, warrior mode, Barack. <laughs> but uh, um, do you think Munguia, moving on to Munguia, now kudos to both guys for giving the fans an entertaining fight. But as far as Munguia, did he show he's ready for the Triple Gs of the world? Well, I think it all boils down to it was the battle of the chins <laughs> and at the end of the war Munguia outworked Gabriel Rosado um to say that he proved himself for Triple G I think styles make fights I think that particular style I think there was a couple of times where Gabriel stunned Munguia you know where he was like when he felt it he backed up a little bit but he just has that kind of tenacity where he just comes back forward right. I, I, that that'll be tough for him to take Triple G shots. I believe Triple G probably hits harder. Also, we've seen Triple G box. Triple G reverted to boxing in the second fight against Canelo, and that's what he might do as well to set up those power shots. So, I mean, to say that he performed well for Triple G, I don't, I don't know. And I, one thing I did notice is that in the, before the fight started, it seemed like the crowd was there for Munguia more so than Rosado. But then during the fight, you would hear more cheers for Rosado. So you would have rounds where uh, Munguia probably landed 30-something shots on Rosado. But the 10 that Rosado landed, the, the crowd applauded much more. And, and that probably swayed people to say, you know what, Rosado won that round. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it was a pro-boxing crowd. Yes, there were probably more Mexican fans in the building because it was on the West Coast, but... 
Yo, Mexicans love boxing, and they knew they were going to get an entertaining fight. And in regards to Munguia and Triple G, Barack, if he's not ready now, he's never going to be ready. Munguia has already been a world champion. He's been at that elite level for a long time. So when people say that, are you ready? If you're not ready now, retire. This is a fight that needs to happen. Uh, yes, the styles, it seems like these two styles will be explosive in the ring. That, that's what we want. <laughs> so uh, I think he's ready. I think he should have fought him a while ago. Hopefully the fight happens soon enough. Well, you know what I always say um, when people ask, is he ready? I would say, well, ready means he deserves it. Ready doesn't mean that he can beat it. 2021 has become the year of the upset in the UK. From Laura Warrington in February to Joshua Usyk in September. Add to that another big upset this year. Kiko Martinez viciously knocking out Kid Galahad in the sixth round on Saturday. Earlier in the card, American Alicia Baumgartner stuns Terry Harper to capture the WBC and IBO Super Featherweight titles. Two huge upsets that halted talks for both Galahad and Harper to have bigger fights in early 2022. Wow, Ak, we had incredible upsets. They were, they were shocking. What do you think uh, was the biggest statement or the one that was the most shocking, actually? That's a tough question for me, Barack. I was thinking about it because, first off, Kiko Martinez is a 17-year veteran, right? And yes, he has 10 losses, but he also has 30 knockouts out, out of his 43 wins. This guy's a big puncher, and he always throws hard shots. One thing I noticed about Galahad, even though he looked good lately, he often keeps his hands low. I really, early in that fight, I started to see the possibility of overhand right landing. No cap, but I still picked Galahad before the fight, so I'll eat my crow because I didn't think that the old vet would just have enough. But I also thought about how big of a puncher he was and how there's a possibility he can land a shot. In regards to Baumgartner, she's always, even though she doesn't have a ton of fights, I always saw her to be a very skilled fighter. I I actually picked her going into this fight. I picked her to win this fight. Oh, stop. And, and we, we didn't, we stop didn't, it. I, we listen, didn't, let, we, hold on, hold on. All let your predictions were state. wrong. 100% let me finish, wrong. Let me, see, now you're lying because we didn't even, we, we did not get predictions for that fight on camera. But I'm telling you that I picked her to win. I know. Because All the I ones liked, you did predict were wrong. Because, because I liked her style. I thought that she was a better boxer than Harper. I'm just going to say it like that. And even though she went, uh, you know, in em enemy territory, she was the underdog, I had her winning. So I'm not that shocked that she won that fight. So if I had to answer that question, Barack, if I had to pick what was the most shocking, it was a Kiko Martinez fight, even though it wasn't that shocking. I would agree with you. Uh, I wouldn't agree with your predictions. I think your predictions are always wrong. One day you're just going to have to come on and say, you know what? I'm not going to make predictions because I'm wrong too much. All right, let me ask you a question. What did I predict for Canelo Plant? Okay, enough said. Move, moving forward. It doesn't the matter tenth, what you predicted. 10th and 12th You predicted round. what everybody else in the no, world no, 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 predicted no, no, no. I predicted. Canelo Plant. I predicted 10th and 12th well, between well, the 10th and 12th. Well, don't well, name the on. one you got right. We're talking about you just got two wrong. You so just got what? two completely I'm just, wrong. I, I have and plenty. I have that plenty means you ate crow for work. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But I do agree with you about Kiko Martinez. Like, if, if anything, I thought Baumgartner was going to win. But Kiko Martinez, of course, I knew he had a chance. Like you said, yeah, he punches hard. But we're thinking, oh, he's older. He's been in some wars. This is kid Galahad's chance. The momentum was with him, but obviously Kiko could have won, and wow. I just think Galahad, you know, he just didn't have the right game plan. He got a little too too relaxed in there, and he has this, he just has a habit of just putting that hand down like that, yes. and, and, and he got hit, but he wasn't on his toes. Like, he's leaning straight back instead of using his feet to, to keep the distance, and that was the problem. And Kiko, Kiko saw that early. Kiko saw that early in the fight and said, okay, I'm just gonna take one step closer and I'm going to get him at the end of the punch and drop him. That's exactly what he saw. And you can tell, if you're a fight fan and you dissect the sport, you can tell that he was waiting for that moment. He was just yeah. waiting to be in that position. And that's what old vets do. They, they'll, they'll give you a few rounds. They'll let you land some shots. But they're going to get theirs off at, one, at some point. And after that first knockdown, I, I saw Barack that... Uh, the fight wasn't going to go further. He went, he got, yes, he was saved by the bell, but he wasn't really coherent even in that corner throughout that break. So after that, I knew pretty much that the fight was over. 